Family Theater presents Eddie Cantor and Wendell Corey. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents The Little Prince, starring Wendell Corey. And here is your host, Eddie Cantor. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, The Little Prince, starring Wendell Corey as Zachary Balter. Package is quite in order, Dr. Bolton. Uh, thanks. Uh, anything else I have to have checked? Only your passport and the identification papers at their next desk. The officer in the gray uniform. Good enough. Uh, your valise? I got it. Thanks. Name, please, sir? Dr. Zachary Bolton. Uh, your passport? Here. Uh, American? Yes. Do you understand the conditions of your travel permit, Doctor? It's for one week, I understand. That. So, it is my duty, therefore, to give you formal notice now that if by the end of that week you have not left our country, you will be subject to fine and imprisonment under the State Immigration Code. I understand. Very well. Would you be kind enough to initial this form in acknowledgement of those conditions? Sure. Uh, use my pen. Thanks. There you go. Anything else? Uh, one thing more. You are required to state your reason for entry. It's there in the permit. The child is sick. I've been called to this country for consultation. Oh, yes, I see. It, uh, it must be a very important child to uh, bring you halfway around the world, Doctor. I wouldn't know about that. I've been advanced all my expenses and 50% of my fee. I can't kick. Of course. Anything else? No, no, your papers are in order. You may go. Thanks. Uh, say, how would I get to the, uh, wait a minute, uh, Karen Hotel? Or any of the taxi drivers at the terminal entrance can take you there. Good. All the way through the annex, out to glass doors. Thanks. Goodbye. Goodbye, and uh, remember, Doctor... Yes? One week. That's right, uh, 614. Take the ladies' bags up right away. Oh, yes, sir? My name's Balter. I wired ahead for reservation. Uh, Balter, one moment, sir. Balter, Balter, Balter. Oh, yes, Dr. Balter. That's right. A single room with bed for one week. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Anything wrong? Only that we are so crowded, sir. Had my reservation almost a week. Oh, yes, Dr. Bolt. And the room is yours. But uh, might I ask, uh, will you be leaving it for the full week? Well, no, matter of fact. I'll be leaving town for a few days tomorrow. But I expect to be back by Thursday or Friday. I see, sir. In, in that case, would you object to our letting out the room while you are gone? Well, not as long as I can get it when I come back. Oh, you will, sir. Uh, what's the story, those... Liberators of yours back again for another levy? It is uh, the automotive plant at the edge of the city. They are uh, rounding up forced labor to dismantle it for shipment uh, home. I see. And all the visiting bigwigs are looking for a hot meal and a warm bed. I'm afraid so, sir. Okay, you can have the room after tonight until Friday. Oh, thank you, Doctor. But I want it by then. Oh, you shall have it, sir, by all means. Uh, uh, 509, uh, here is your key. Thanks. Oh, uh, incidentally, is there a Dr. Robert Longtray registered here yet? Uh, Longtray. Uh, Longtray, Longtray. Uh, yes, room 412. Is he a friend of yours? Oh, not yet, but I hope he will be. Uh, 
Uh, Dr. Longfrey? Yes. Uh, my name is Balter, Dr. Zachary Balter. Uh, Dr. Balter, come in, come in. Uh, je parle français, mais pas bien. Oh, no, no, I can speak English. But, uh, do smash, you know. Yes, mostly on anglais, mais... But our other colleague is an Englishman. It will be easier in English. Uh, it will be for me. Oh, say, I'm sorry about the delay. My plane got held up in Rome. It is nothing. Dr. Rutledge himself arrived here less than two hours ago. This hotel? Yes, just down the hall. In fact, I shall notify him you are here, and we can... Room 409, please. Yes. Uh, and we can get to the matter at hand. Uh, can we still leave by tomorrow, no, uh, tomorrow morning? Oh, it is imperative that we do. My permit is... Uh, Dr. Rutledge? Dr. Longfrey. The American doctor has arrived. Yes, in my room now. Would you have a moment to come down? Very good. We shall be waiting. For 12. Yes, goodbye. He will be along presently. You know Rutledge personally? Uh, no, only by, repute, by reputation, like yourself. Why, thanks. He is a very good man, I think. All the best. Uh, you read that talk he gave before the Royal Academy last summer on mononucleosis? Uh, yes, very good, very good indeed. I say, doctor, there's a... One thing about this business I'm not straight on. Uh, maybe you can clear it up for me. Yes? Yeah. This sick child. He's royalty, isn't he? Yes. He's a prince. His family once ruled this land. Is that why all the hush-hush? To a large extent, I think. The hope of the people here seems to be with the monarchy. But after all, they must face facts. You mean Marshal Dumio? He is the prophet. The occupying power support him. Well, I wouldn't give you a thin dime for Dumio, but I've never been a great fan of this king business either. There is a difference, Doctor, I assure you. This child is a symbol to the people. His ancestors were beloved monarchs. The people would like it again to have a king. Well, I suppose their politics is their own business. Uh, one moment, please. Oh, Dr. Rutledge, come in. Ah, uh, Dr. Longbe. Uh, just after I spoke to you, that Wallach chap rang me up. Oh? Yes, and I... I oh. Ah, uh, Dr. Bolter? Yes. Oh, excuse me, excuse me, Dr. Bolter, Dr. Rutledge. How, How do you do? You mentioned Wallach. What did he want? Well, it seems our arrival here has attracted some attention. He wonders if we can leave tonight. Who's Wallach? Uh, he's been handling the arrangements for the trip. I don't know much else about him. Actually, he is a minor tax official for the Dumeo government, but his sympathies are with the monarchy. When he says leave tonight, uh, does he mean right now? He said the sooner the better. up the sidewalks early in this town, don't they? Right there. I do not seem to recall the streets being so empty last night at this time. Maybe the marshal slept on a curfew. I understand he's good at that. And perhaps, but then why have we not been stopped? That looks like the plaza up ahead. And so it is. Now, left? Let me see. Yes, left and then stay on that street through to the city gates. The hotel where Wallach is to meet us is in a suburb ten miles south of here. Yeah, you say that according to Wallach, the child's condition is serious? It could be, if left untended much longer. I'm surprised their own doctors couldn't get together on a diagnosis. I rather have the feeling they wanted to wash their hands of the case in view of the child's parentage. Oh, that's a thought. I guess Dumio wouldn't have much trouble wrecking their professional careers if he wanted to. No, I should think not. Look. Look up ahead. Where? Say, is that limousine just turning around in the middle of the street? Well, looks like it's parked there to me. Yes, I think it is, Balder. Now, what could be that? I got it. Oh, look, getting getting out of the back seat on the other side there. Oh, yes, two men in uniform. You may have been right about the curfew after all, Dr. Bolton. In a funny place for a roadblock. I can't tell if they're police or soldiers. Probably the same thing in this country. They are waving us down. You had better stop, Doctor. Right up. I suggest we have our passports ready. Yeah, probably just a routine thing. Identification, please. All right, you are. Oh, uh, here. Here's mine. Anything wrong? And yours, sir? Here. Yeah. Ah. You are Doctors Rutledge, Longprey, and Balter. That is correct. Hmm. 
It is my duty then to inform you that a high-ranking official of my country's government has requested a uh, brief informal meeting with you. Meeting? What kind of a meeting? Tonight. At this moment. Uh, gentlemen, your respective embassies have been informed of this invitation. They suggest that you comply. Uh, but look here, old man, we're in a bit of a rush. <laughs> my instructions are to tell you the meeting would be brief. Now, wait a minute. It is but a short distance away. Scarcely four blocks. I don't care how near it is. Uh, we... Dr. Bolter, perhaps we would lose less time by accepting the invitation. That's a good point, Bolter. These chaps love to haggle. Uh, it's up to you, gentlemen. You will be on your way again in less than half an hour. It seems unavoidable. Okay, I'm game. Um, how do we get there? Uh, uh, with your permission. <laughs> yeah, sure, get in. Uh. Now, after you turn around, go back past the plaza to the large gray building at its north end. Is that where our host lives? Yes, in the palace. If you will make yourself comfortable in this apartment. You're not going to stick us here and forget us, are you? It will be only a few moments. You will find refreshments on the buffet. Make yourselves as comfortable as possible. Thanks. Hmm. Parquet floors. Priceless tapestries. Yes. Palace, all right. What do you think? Dumeo. Marshal Dumeo himself. Here, yeah, yeah. But why would he want to see us? I don't know. Possibly because of the child. Incidentally, you know, this was the old royal palace. Am I right? Mm. Yes. If the child's family had stayed on the throne, he would be living here today. Oh. Oh, say, by the way, uh, where is he living? I do not know the exact location, but Wallach tells me it is not far from the suburban hotel where we are to meet. Well, I hope we don't get hung up here for... Come in. Allow me to welcome you. I am Yoro Dumio. Please seat yourself, gentlemen. It is not often our country has three such illustrious visitors. The honor is ours, Marshal. Quite. May I offer you some wine? Thank, Thank you. you, sir. You first, Doctor. Walter, uh, is it? It is. Oh, thanks. Not at all. I rather imagine you are all curious as to why I have requested this meeting. Dr. Longpre, your glass. Thank you. Uh, yes, speaking for myself, I am Marshal. Uh, Dr. Rutledge. Oh, thank you, sir. Well, it, uh, it concerns the patient which has brought you to my country. The child? Yes, Dr. Balter. You see, there has been a little nonsense about my attitude toward the child and the royal family in general. Nonsense? Yes, just that. Uh, oh, allow me... Uh, no, thanks. This is plenty. Uh, doctors, more wine? Uh, no, Thank you, sir. No. No. Uh, well, uh, to be specific... Oh, by all means, sit down. Uh, the uh, uh, most persistent and pernicious nonsense being spread about is that I regard this young prince as a threat to my regime, which is, of course, fantastic. Oh? Yes. To begin with, my countrymen no longer want a monarchy. We are building a new state with the help of our liberators. But, uh, if this is the case... Uh, yes, uh, Dr. Longpre. Why does the child concern you? I was just coming to that. As I say, my countrymen no longer want the monarchy, but I realize they miss the pomp, the pageantry that the royal family can provide. Within limits, I would like to restore this to their lives. You mean you'd like to put the prince back on his throne? Well, let us say rather that I would like to put a symbol back on the throne, since that is all he would be. Uh, quite, but... Um... Could you be certain the child would remain only a symbol after he'd learned his way about? I am reasonably certain. You see, for all the clamor about him in some quarters, there is serious doubt that he has a valid claim to the title of prince at all. Well, the dead king was his father, wasn't he? The child is scarcely two. His mother was a commoner who married the king long after the people of this country had banished him. Following the king's uh, <laughs> ascent to heaven, she remarried a commoner like herself. All this in exile. Now, who is to say which man fathered this child who claims the title of prince? 
I should think that public medical records should give you that answer. The foreign records can be forged, and I am convinced his have been. If you are so convinced, Marshal, why return the child to the throne at all? For exactly the reasons I have given, Doctor. To restore some of the color and excitement that a royal family can give to a country. It need not be known the child is bogus. He will serve his purpose nonetheless. But, Marshal... Yes, uh, Dr. Bolter? If, uh, if that's really what you want to do, why haven't you done it? Because, to be frank, up to now, I have been unable to. How come? My every effort to locate the child and his mother since their arrival in this country has proved futile. I see. I understand they are in serious financial straits, and I can appreciate their desire to travel incognito in view of these poisonous rumors, but it is nonsense. Maybe they don't know you want to help them. That is why I have asked to see you, gentlemen. I need your help in locating and convincing the mother. Do you know a man by the name of Wallach? Wallach? I see by all your faces that you do. Put your minds at rest. I have been in touch with Mr. Wallach this evening. Did he know you were going to see us? He was informed that I intended to. You know his loyalty to the mother and child. Uh, he will take you to them. Yes. Then let Mr. Wallach's position in this matter guide you. Good evening, gentlemen. to be there about now, shouldn't we? Uh, a bit longer. The inn's this side of the village, right? Yes, a little. Scandalous light on these country roads, you know. Forgive the bumps and whatnot. Oh, not at all. Unavoidable. You know, I still don't understand about Wallach. Going along with the marshal. It does seem irregular. Well, perhaps they've decided to take half a loaf. What do you mean? Well, this way at least the little chap gets back on the throne. They could work from there. Mm, maybe... Look, are those lights off to the right up ahead? They sure are. Yes, I think that's it. The place looks almost deserted. I can see a car parked out in front. The place seems to fit the description of the hotel. Well, let's have a look. I'll turn in. Only one car, all right. Strange. What's that? The lights I saw were not coming from the building. It is dark. They were this car's parking lights. Yeah, that's no way to treat a battery. Wait, I'll open the door and turn them off. This is funny. This guy left his dash lights on, too. I better... There's something wrong? Look. What, what is it? Man. Uh, hold on, I'll make a light. Slumped over on the floor. Mon Dieu. What? It is Mr. Wallach... He has been shot. Wallach. Yes. Wait. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. His pulse is still beating. He's alive? Barely. Dr. Longford. Hey. Go see if you can wake someone in the hotel. We've got to get this man on a cart. Poor devil. We did everything we could to save him. Just too late. He had been marked by the one we cannot intercept. You mean Dumio? No. I was thinking of the angel of death. I'd say the marshal was right at his elbow tonight. Oh, yes. It was undoubtedly one of Dumio's men who shot Wallach. Do you suppose they got anything out of him before he died? I don't believe so. That's precious little he told us, even after he knew who we were. 21 Batel Street. Over and over. Yeah. The address of the trial? I cannot think what else it could be. Well, there's little more we can do here. You phoned the authorities? Oh, yes. And I jolly well like us to be on our way before they arrive. Well, listen, there's one thing about this we ought to remember. Dumio didn't have Wallach killed only to shut him up before we got here. How do you mean? Well, this looks to me like the marshal's subtle way of telling us to turn around and go home. Now. Quite. And I imagine if we don't go home now... He'll make rather a fuss about letting us go at all once we've seen the trial. Well, does the way we go back have to be the way we came in? Officially, yes. But there is another way. You mean the underground? 
We could certainly count on their help, but it is dangerous. Uh, Once we take the jump, I guess there's no turning back. I cannot see how. If caught, we will doubtless be tried as saboteurs or something equally monstrous, and that will take care of us. Well, we'd better decide pretty quickly. You know, the police are on their way. Yeah. Well, in all fairness, since we've taken good money for the job... We owe some professional courtesy to the child. Yeah, true, and then there's that rot we're always preaching about the doctor's first duty. Being to his patient? Well, after all, we're forever harping on it. Why, sure. Uh, say, uh, what was that address again? Gentlemen, I would just uh, like 21 to say... 21 Street. Oh, excuse me, Doctor. I would just like to say, let's go. <laughs> Twenty-one? I think so. Just a second. Yeah. Yeah, this is it. Bon. Yeah, the place looks a bit run down, huh? Run down. The house is a slum. Oh, doesn't even have a doorbell. Better knock. Yeah. Well, I suppose it's up to us to tell them about Wallach. I'm afraid so. I wonder if anybody's home. You know, it's possible they've heard what happened to him. And... Yes. Uh, we, uh, uh, we are the doctors Mr. Wallach was bringing. Yes, step inside quickly. If you are wondering why Mr. Wallach is not with us... No. We had already learned. That is why my husband is not here now. He went looking for you. News must travel rather fast in this time. A friend of ours with the police found us what had happened. It... is awful. I... Are you the child's mother? Yes. Would you like to see him? Perhaps, madame, if we might first examine whatever medical history or notes there might be on the case. Oh, yes, I have them. Will you come in here, please? Yes. yes, yes. Thank you. This is all. I'm afraid the other doctors did not leave much information. Thank you. Even so. Hmm. so. Can you read this line? A word here, a word there. Oh, this is most unsatisfactory. Uh, perhaps if you... Uh, is it Your Majesty? The king promised me it would be. Someday. But for now, just mother of the prince. I see. Well, perhaps if you could tell us about the trial. He... He's like his father, the king. Strong. Robust. And yet, since he came to this country, he has been failing. How about his diet? Even getting enough of the right things to eat? As you can see, we are penniless. Not only that, the soil of this land is too poor to nourish its people. But your... your present husband has a job, hasn't he? He has been brought here as a forced laborer. The quarter from a city in the north where we lived. To help dismantle the automotive plant. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. He receives a ration allowance... But no money. It's a shame. But you must understand, he is a wonderful man. Brave and kind. He would give his life for my son. But look here. I can see you're broke. You're living in this hovel. You must not think we are unhappy. Okay, but where did all the money come from? Money? Sure, our expense money. The fees you sent us. We come pretty high. Oh, I see, of course. You were not told. Not a word came right out of a clear sky. They were all the small offerings sent to the king over the years of his exile by the people in this country who were still faithful to him and wanted him to return with a great army. And instead, only you and his son have returned penniless. In the king's will, he instructed that it be done this way. How do you think all his followers in this country will take to the idea of their crown prince being as poor as a church mouse? Some will honor him, others will not, but he will love and help them all. You seem pretty sure of what kind of man he'll be. He's his father's son, and he will serve his father's people no matter what it costs him. A mother like you, I guess he will that. Could could we see the child now? Of course. But he is asleep, so please walk softly. Right in here. 
come in. I try to keep the light low. Can you see his face? We. Oui. He seems to be resting quietly. Yes. He had a little hot milk a while ago. Uh, look, he, he's opened his eyes. Hello there, young man. Look at him smile. Perhaps. Perhaps he knows you have come to help him. His forehead seems cool enough. Well, he does look robust. If I'm a little thin. I, I may be premature, gentlemen, but I think we can mend this young man. The right medicine, a bit more of the proper food. I say, are we all reaching for our prescription pads at once? <laughs> well, I know. As a matter of fact, I was uh, reaching for my wallet. You too, Rutledge? Well, uh, yes, now that you mention it. Is there something I can get you, doctors? No, no. We, well, we want to give you and your son this money that was sent to us. But you have traveled so far to come here at such expense. Please. We want to do it. Besides, you'll need money to leave the country for a while before Dumio's crowd can track you down. You have already been so generous in coming here to help my son. Then why not call this the same kind of gift that the others sent? An offering to the king. <laughs> This is Eddie Cantor again. Have you made up your list of New Year's resolutions yet? You haven't? Well, then let me make a humble suggestion. Don't bother with a list. I speak from experience. Lists have a way of getting lost or forgotten. And after all, what would you include in such a list that you haven't promised to do before? I resolve not to lose my temper so easily. I resolve not to be such a grouch not to complain so much when the kids are noisy or my wife is late getting dinner on the table. I resolve this, I resolve that. Why bother with a list when it all comes down to the same promise? I resolve to be a better person, a better parent, a better neighbor. We don't need a list to tell ourselves that, but there is one resolution we can make that will enable us to keep all the others. The resolution to lift our hearts and minds to the Almighty through daily family prayer. And if we still need a reminder to remind us of that, remember, the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Family Theater has been brought to you transcribed from Hollywood and has brought to you The Little Prince, starring Wendell Corey. Eddie Cantor was your host. Others in our cast were Edgar Barrier, Ben Wright, Larry Dobkin, Virginia Gregg, Theodore Von Else, and Herb Butterfield. The music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and the script was written and directed for Family Theater by John T. Kelly. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program by the Mutual Network, which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Larry Chatterton expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us again next week when family theater will present... Sideman, starring Joe Stafford, Dan Durier, and Scotty Beckett. Join us, won't you? <laughs> Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Mm -hmm.